Okay, we're looking now at the part of the chapter on sexual dysfunction. And in sexual dysfunction, we're including problems of sexual interest, sexual arousal, or response. And these are widespread throughout society. There are causes, um, there are causes uh, of much stress in individuals which, um, with their partners and some common features in sexual dysfunction that are found. You'll find these in table th um, uh, 9.3 and that's on page 336. And you'll see the incidence rates in table um, 9.4. So take time to look at that so to get an idea of, in terms of sexual dysfunction, what we're talking about. Now, what we're also seeing is that sexual dysfunctions have existed throughout a person's lifetime, and there's others that are acquired later in life. And so we're going to look at the types, we're going to look at the theories, and we're going to look at the treatment prospects. All right, so these are, again, falling within the same categories as those conditions of what is an abnormal behavior that fit within Chapter 1 and that we just heard about in um, the previous uh, video for us on gender dysphoria. All right, so let's get started on this, and uh, good luck. We're almost there, everybody. The DSM-5 groups most sexual dysfunctions into the following categories. Um, the first three of these categories I'm going to review with you here um, are phases of the sexual response cycle, with the first two will be discussed together, okay? So the first being sexual desire disorders. This is where we're looking at things like hypoactive sexual desire and sexual aversion disorder. The second group is that of uh, sexual arousal disorders. This is where we're looking at female sexual arousal disorders and uh, related to vaginal lubrication and male erectile disorders related to attaining or maintaining an erection. This does not include the occasional difficulty. It has to fall within the same category of all other disorders. It needs to be persistent or reoccurrent episodes. The third category is of orgasmic or orgasm disorders, female and male orgasmic disorders, and premature ejaculation. Either the absence of orgasm or persistent reoccurring delay of reaching orgasm. In men, premature ejaculation is included in this category. And then the last category is genital pelvic uh, pain penetration disorder. Um, there are four core morbid conditions which are not um, which are not caused by a medical condition. You can see this on page uh, 339. Now an example would be vaginismus, and we'll look at that in this particular category as well. When we're looking at the theories for sexual dysfunction, sexual dysfunction can stem from biological factors such as a disease or the effects of alcohol and drugs and tobacco. Uh, diabetes is the most common organic cause for, for erectile dysfunction. Testosterone has a huge role in sexual interest and functioning in both men and women. Biological issues are a major cause of sexual dysfunction. Psychological factors such as performance anxiety or unresolved conflicts or lack of sexual competencies are often explained through conflicts within Freud's psychosexual stages. Now these are very controversial and questionable um, re, the type of research that was done in terms of his background, it wasn't very solid, and so there's not a lot of good substantiation for his work in this area. Now learning, we look at the role of conditioned anxiety. Um, anxiety being linked to sexual activity. Thus learning that sex or sexual situations are anxiety producing. Also, they look at sexual fulfillment through trial and error with sexual partners and the messages that we have learned from these experiences as having an influence on degrees of or types of sexual dysfunction we may experience. And lastly, we'll touch just quickly on cognitive, where it looks at the irrational attitudes and the beliefs that are, cons that are considered here for sexual dysfunction. Faulty thinking, catastrophizing, globalizing, uh, fear of failure. And so it's all this sort of faulty thinking that interferes with a positive experience, a positive sexual experience with a partner. 
We can continue on when we look at some other explanations. We can look at problems in relationships. It takes two to tango and sometimes the problems in relationships are fought in the bedroom or a couple find it difficult to communicate with, with, with one another where issues of a sexual nature become much, much more difficult if you can't talk about your relationship or you can't talk about finances or raising children. Getting into talking about sexual issues can be very difficult. The sociocultural factors such as uh, sexually restrictive cultural learning, uh, sex um, used to be uh, thought, of a thought of as a male activity where for women it was done more as a duty. Now of course this, would, um, this is not where we stand today and this would not expose women to, uh, not give women the opportunity to be self-aware sexually. What makes them, you know, what makes them happy and what is sexually satisfying? They wouldn't know this and it wouldn't be a part of their consciousness, their experience. Psych psychologically, issues like depression, anxiety, guilt, low self-esteem can all affect sexual interest or function. One, um, one well-known condition is performance anxiety, the excessive concern about performing successfully. Instead of absorbing themselves in the erotic experience, they concern themselves with how well are they performing. Now treatment, now this has often been described or if in terms of treatment as being sex therapy, and it focuses on directly modifying problematic sexual behavior by enhancing self-efficacy experiences. This self-efficacy is basically you feel good about yourself and teaching sexual competencies, improving sexual communication, and reducing performance anxiety. Now this work was largely initiated in terms of sex therapy, was pioneered by Masters and Johnsons in the 60s. And it's, um, it still has a profound impact on the direction of treatment and sexual dysfunction. So with the area of sexual interest and sexual desi desire disorders, therapists try to use um, uh, sexual fantasy and self-stimulation to rekindle the sexual appetite. In some cases, testosterone replacement therapy is useful where that hormone is deficient. Now when I say is deficient, it's deficient in that individual. Not everybody, just because they're getting older, lose their testosterone levels. Uh, some, it, it stays quite adequate. So in those individuals where testosterone is low, they find that by increasing testosterone can have an impact on sexual desire and sexual interest. Uh, disorders of orgasm, um, the relationship between anxiety about sex and poor exposure to positive self-awareness about one's own sexuality, the therapist will assist with reconnecting um, people who suffer from uh, uh, disorders of orgasm with a more positive view of sex and one's own sexuality. Where this is where masturbation is encouraged to learn about what feels good and what is desirable without needing to attend to a partner's needs. Genteel pelvic pain and penetration disorder, um, vaginism, uh, sorry, vaginismus is not a physical defect. It's what's often uh, some women will experience. Rather, it's a psychological state uh, affect by, uh, affected by uncomfortable intercourse. Treatment involved is, in, is cognitive behavior techniques, relaxation techniques, and the use of dilators to improve sex, the sexual experience. Biological treatments uh, of male sexual dysfunction really started to take a different uh, direction in 1998 when the first drug for the prevention of erectile dysfunction, Viagra, to, where, where it focuses is on the increase of blood flow to the penis. Now, it's not been the only medication available, Cialis, Levitra. Um, SSRIs and testosterone replacement therapy have also been proven to be helpful in the area of male sexual dysfunction. It's curious that we have research being done in male sexual dysfunction, but we have very little research being done in female sexual dysfunction. Uh, it's largely uh, that a lot of research involves men doing research about men's issues as opposed to getting more women involved where that's starting to happen. And we may see more of that result for women um, emerging in the near future. All right, there's our chapter. We are complete looking at gender dysphoria, paraphilia disorders, and 
uh, sexual dysfunction. Next week, we'll be looking at uh, feeding and eating disorders and sleep um, awake disorders. So we're getting there. We're almost at the end. So keep up the good work and good luck on your test. Bye now.